It's Monday, September 24th. How often does an illness or an injury sustained by one member of a family push that family into poverty? In India, 55 million people were pushed into poverty in one single year because of healthcare expenses. 38 million of them became poor only because they had to purchase medicines through out-of-pocket payments. Out-of-pocket expenditure is the payment an individual makes at a point of service which is not covered under any financial protection scheme or insurance. In India, out-of-pocket medical expenses make up a whopping 62% of healthcare costs. Compare this to even BRICS nations, let alone developed ones. Out-of-pocket expenses are contained at 20% in these countries. Which is why public health experts are asking whether the government's ambitious Ayushman Bharat or the National Health Protection Mission just rolled out could prove to be a game changer. Illness doesn't consider economic background, neither should cure, says the promotional material. What exactly is the scheme? Ayushman Bharat, now known as the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, will provide financial protection or up to 5 lakh cover per family per year for secondary and tertiary care. This will cover over 10 crore families. It will allow for treatment in any public or empaneled private hospital across the country. All members of eligible families as per the socio-economic caste census 2011 data can avail of the cover. It essentially covers deprived rural families and identified occupational categories of urban workers' families. 1,350 medical packages covering surgery, medical and daycare treatments, including medicines, diagnostics and transport have been identified. Okay, but what about primary health care? The scheme provides for upgrading 1,50,000 sub-centres into health and wellness centres and proposes to provide comprehensive primary health care. This includes diagnostic services. Sounds good on paper. So, what are the main challenges? To begin with, where will the beneficiaries be able to use this 5 lakh cover if they find it difficult to even access hospitals and doctors? India faces a huge supply shortage of human resources and hospitals and diagnostic centres. Nearly 40% of health workers' posts are lying vacant in many states. There are either no doctors at all or there is a crippling shortage of doctors in primary health centres. There are a vast number of district hospitals that are meant to provide secondary care that simply have no specialists. Let me take a minute to tell you why. Simply the shortage of seats in medical colleges and the shrinking postgraduate seats in government colleges and the shockingly unaffordable education in private medical colleges that charge very high capitation fees. India's medical education crisis, of course, merits a separate report, so more on that later. Now, back to the protection scheme. There is also deep disparity in availability of hospitals, diagnostic centres and doctors between different states. As former Health Secretary Sujata Rao and other experts have pointed out, the scheme allows for portability, so we may well see patients now gravitating towards southern states that have better health infrastructure even as deficit states take time to build hospitals, etc. Then there is the question of package rates. The Indian Medical Association has said that the reimbursement rates set for treatments covered in the scheme are very low and it is unviable to provide quality health care at such rates. The IMA claims most package rates set by the government do not cover even 30% of the cost of the procedure and no hospital can work on these rates without seriously compromising patient safety. The scheme, they say, would be a non-starter owing to this. The business line reported last month that bigger hospitals are staying away due to the scheme's lack of clarity. Former Health Secretary Sujata Rao writes that the strategy for negotiating or containing prices being charged for services needs to be spelt out. Rao compared the Aryogashri Health Insurance Program in Andhra Pradesh with the billing in a private hospital in Hyderabad. She says, 
The rates here were not only incomparable but also did not reflect the market prices of common procedures or treatment protocols to be followed by hospitals. So, a CT scan that cost 19,080 rupees in the Hyderabad hospital was only 500 in government hospitals in Tamil Nadu and 7,000 in private hospitals in Tamil Nadu and Delhi. Since Arogya Shri, like all insurance models since, has only package rates, there is no way the government or the payer has an idea of the shifts in the price of components within the package. This knowledge is essential to regulate or negotiate prices to contain costs. Also, this scheme builds on the already existing RSBY, Rashtriya Swastya Bhima Yojana, by raising the cover to 5 lakhs. But have the lessons learned from RSBY been factored into Ayushman Bharat? Not really, say some public health experts. The RSBY, some argue, did not greatly reduce the out-of-pocket expenditure, as much of the expenditure related to loss of wages, transport and pre- and post-treatment costs, which are not covered by insurance. And finally, one of the concerns around the National Health Protection Scheme is also that it would channel public funds into private insurance companies without significant payoffs for the poor. We will explore this aspect tomorrow. It was the Indian government that proposed that Anil Ambani's Reliance Defence be named the India Partner in the Rafale deal. Former French President François Hollande's statement to French publication Media Part has given a fresh twist to the Rafale row. The government has repeatedly maintained that it was Rafale manufacturer Dassault that picked Anil Ambani's Reliance Defence as its India Partner and that the government had nothing to do with the process. The opposition has been alleging cronyism in Anil Ambani's Reliance Defence being picked to partner French company Dassault as the offset partner. This at the cost of India's public sector aerospace and defence unit, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Reliance Defence has no experience in aerospace technology. The Defence Ministry responded to Hollande's reported claims by reiterating that neither the government of India nor the French government had any say in the commercial decision. Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra retires on the 2nd of October. This means we will be seeing the pronouncement of judgments reserved in cases by benches presided by him this week. Here are a few crucial ones. A five-judge bench will rule on a bunch of petitions challenging the constitutional validity of Aadhaar and provisions of the Aadhaar Act. The judgment on the petition challenging the validity of the ban on the entry of menstruating women into Shabarimala Temple. A ruling on a petition seeking the disqualification of charge-sheeted politicians from contesting elections. And the order on the plea to refer to a larger bench, the Supreme Court judgment of 1994 that held that offering namaz at a mosque was not an integral part of Islam. This is part of and key to the appeal of the 2010 Allahabad High Court judgment on Ayodhya or the Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid dispute. Fan Bingbing is China's biggest actress, among the highest paid actresses in the world, in a career spanning two decades. Bingbing has starred in over a hundred Chinese films, she's acted in Hollywood films, in the X-Men and Iron Man franchise, and defined Chinese beauty standards. She also disappeared into thin air, missing since the 1st of July. Her 60 million plus followers on Chinese social media site Weibo are miffed. Is she hiding? Or was she removed? Detained? Silenced? Trouble started for Bingbing in May after she allegedly submitted yin yang contracts, which are fake contracts with a smaller amount than what they have actually been paid for a film to tax authorities. The timing couldn't have been worse. The government had just announced a pay cap for on-screen actors, mandating that they should receive no more than 40% of the total production cost. Soon after in June, fans scored 0 out of 100 in the 2017-18 China Film and Television Star Social Responsibility Report. The study was commissioned by China's communist government, who've been cracking down on their entertainment industry for, quote, promoting money worship and destroying social values. Over the last two months, companies and brands have distanced themselves from her. 
Her fiance, another Chinese actor, has erased all photographs or mentions of her from his profile on Weibo. On the 6th of September, a state news outlet reported that Fan had been brought under control and was about to receive legal judgment. The article was quickly erased, all trace deleted. The implications are almost Orwellian. The use of so-called black jails or re-education camps have been ramped up across China since President Xi Jinping came to power in 2013, reported Time magazine. Two months ago, Fan Bingbing was a powerful global actress. Today, she's in the headlines next to the word missing. So where could Bingbing be? Call us if you find out. We'll see you tomorrow.